since I've been speaking, another 13,000 people around the world are suffering now with diarrhea, and four children have just died. I invented Lifesaver Bottle because I got angry. I, like most of you, was sitting down the day after Christmas in 2004 when I was watching the devastating news of the Asian tsunami as it rolled in, playing out on TV. The days and weeks that followed, people fleeing to the hills, being forced to drink contaminated water or face death. That really stuck with me. Then, a few months later, Hurricane Katrina slammed into the side of America. OK, I thought, here's a first world country. Let's see what they can do. Day one, nothing. Day two, nothing. Do you know it took five days to get water to the Superdome? People were shooting each other on the streets for TV sets and water. That's when I decided I had to do something. Now, I spent a lot of time in my garage over the next weeks and months, and also in my kitchen, much to the dismay of my wife. <laughs> However, after a few failed prototypes, I finally came up with this, the Lifesaver bottle. OK, now for the science bit. Before Lifesaver, the best hand filters were only capable of filtering down to about 200 nanometers. The smallest bacteria is about 200 nanometers. So a 200 nanometer bacteria is going to get through a 200 nanometer hole. The smallest virus, on the other hand, is about 25 nanometers. So that's definitely going to get through those 200 nanometer holes. Lifesaver pores are 15 nanometers. So nothing's getting through. OK, I'm going to give you a bit of a demonstration. Would you like to see that? I spent all the time setting this up, so I guess I should. Um, we're in the fine city of Oxford. So, um, someone's done that up. Fine city of Oxford. So what I've done is I've gone and got some water from the River Cherwell and the River Thames that flow through here, and this is the water. But I got to thinking, you know, if we were in the middle of a flood zone in Bangladesh, the water wouldn't look like this. So I've gone and got some stuff to add into it. And this is from my pond. <coughs> Have a smell of that, Mr. Cameraman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. We're just going to pour that in there. <laughs> okay. We've got some uh, runoff from a sewage plant farm. So I'm just going to put that in there. Put that in there. There we go. And some other bits and pieces. Chuck that in there. And uh, I've got a little gift here from a friend of mine's rabbit. So we're just going to put that in there as well. <laughs> OK. Now, the Lifesaver bottle works really simply. You just scoop the water up. Today I'm going to use a jug just to show you all. Let's get a bit of that poo in there. That's not dirty enough. Let's just stir that up a little bit. OK. So I'm going to take this really filthy water and put it in here. Do you want to drink yet? OK. There we go. Replace the top. Give it a few pumps. OK? That's all that's necessary. Now as soon as I pop the teat, Sterile drinking water is going to come out. I've got to be quick. OK, ready? There we go. Mind the electrics. That is safe, sterile drinking water. <laughs> Good. There you go, Chris. What's it taste of? OK. Let's see Chris's program throughout the rest of the show, OK? OK. Lifesaver bottle is used by thousands of people around the world. It lasts for 6,000 litres, and when it's expired using fail-safe technology, the system will shut off, protecting the user. 
Pop the cartridge out, pop a new one in, it's good for another 6,000 litres. So let's look at the applications. Traditionally in a crisis, what do we do? We ship water. Then, after a few weeks, we set up camps. And people are forced to come into the camps to get their safe drinking water. What happens when 20,000 people congregate in a camp? Diseases spread. More resources are required. The problem just becomes self-perpetuating. But by thinking differently and shipping these, people can stay put. They can make their own sterile drinking water and start to get on with rebuilding their homes and their lives. Now, it doesn't require a natural disaster for this to work. Using the old thinking of national infrastructure and pipe work is too expensive. When you run the numbers on the calculator, you run out of noughts. So here's the thinking different bit. Instead of shipping water and using man-made processes to do it, let's use Mother Nature. She's got a fantastic system. She picks the water up from there, desalinates it for free, transports it over there and dumps it onto the mountains, rivers and streams. And where do people live? Near water. All we've got to do is make it sterile. How do we do that? Well, we could use a lifesaver bottle or we could use one of these. The same technology in a jerry can. This will process 25,000 litres of water. That's good enough for a family of four for three years. And how much does it cost? About half a cent a day to run. Thank you. So by thinking differently and processing water at the point of use, mothers and children no longer have to walk four hours a day to collect their water. They can get it from a source nearby. So with just $8 billion, we can hit the Millennium Goals target of halving the number of people without access to safe drinking water. To put that into context, the UK government spends about £12 billion a year on foreign aid. But why stop there? With $20 billion, everyone can have access to safe drinking water. So the 3.5 billion people that suffer every year as a result, and the 2 million kids that die every year, will live. Thank you.